Always nice to randomly find the key on the floor. Well, isn't that interesting? Trusting, leaving a bike unlocked. Looks like homebrew equipment. Ah, this might come in handy. There, stuck between the boards. Well, and truly wedged in. Interesting. I thought forensics had checked the whole area. Obviously, not very well. Is it Simon? Uh, yeah. Detective Inspector Jenks, I'm investigating an incident in the village. Could I come in and ask you a few questions, please? Um, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, we can just go through here if you want. Uh, Emma's working in the front room. Hi. Uh, this is Inspector Jenks. Jenks. What's all this about? There was a death in the village. Kate Vine, I believe you both knew her. Yeah. Do you need to speak to both of us? Uh, I'll just speak to Simon first, if that's okay. Just come through. Is it okay in here? Oh, this will be fine, yeah. Do you want anything? Water? No, 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 I won't be long. Okay. When was the last time you saw Kate Vine? Um, so last Friday's meeting, I think. Did you see her after the meeting? No. How long have you known Kate? That would be when we started Atlas. Three months ago. Did you socialise outside Atlas? No. How would you describe her? What sort of person was she? Well, she's talented. Uh, she was full of life, you know? Sharp, quite sharp. Would you say she had any emotional problems? She, her mood, her mood could change. And, well, there was the drinking problem. When did you become aware of that? Well, she would come drunk to a meeting sometimes. And she would reek of the stuff. I mean, everyone knew, but nobody really said anything. So, tell me a bit about Atlas. Oh, it's just a business management training program for postgrads. And you started this after you left college? Uh, yeah. And it's on every Friday? Yeah, well, my group isn't doing it this Friday, but uh, one of the groups is. Okay, thanks. Did you know whether Kate had lost this or not? No. No, I don't think so. I've never seen it before.
Which was the bike outside? Oh, that's my cousin's. He lent me it. Uh, I need to buy a new lock for it, though. So it's your bike at the moment? Yeah, yeah. And there's no bus service to speak of around here, so it's really the only way to get around. I noticed a lot of bottles outside. Are they yours? Yeah, I'm at homeroom. For yourself? Well, no, I give it out to my friends and stuff. I tried selling it at first, but I didn't have any takers. Except for James over at Farmhouse. I used to trade it to him for, for herbs and stuff. Do you see James a lot? No, not really. Recognise this at all? It does remind me of something. I don't know. I've seen it somewhere, but I'm... No, I don't know. Thank you. Probably be back later. Don't worry, it's only a few questions. Fia. Have you ever tried Simon's homebrew? See, <laughs> no. I don't like beer. I only drink wine. I can't stand spirits either. Ever seen this? Looks like, uh... That's my old necklace. I gave this to Kate. So Kate might have been wearing it last Friday. Yeah, well, perhaps, but I can't see why. She was always buying new things, you know, lots of jewellery, stuff like that. It's meant to be a bird in cage, but the cage's fallen off. Oh, I'll show you. Where did you buy it? I didn't. Some wanted present. Secret admirer? Mm, that's so secret. I see. That's how it should have looked. It's called a freedom necklace. Do you mind if I keep this? No, not at all. So the necklace did belong to Kate. Interesting. I'm starting to wish I'd brought a spare evidence bag. What's the stack of bottles outside? Oh, that's all Simon's stuff. You better ask him. I, I don't know. Whose is the bike outside? Oh, it's Simon's cousin's. He uses it to get to work. You know the lock's broken. Oh, I know. I keep telling him to fix it. Did you know whether Kate had lost this or not? Um, I don't know, but I, I don't think so. Okay. When was the last time you saw Kate Vine? It was last Thursday in the college library. Um, I saw her and we chatted for a bit. She seemed her usual self. What was her usual self? Oh, just Kate being Kate. You know, a bit wild. Wild? In what way wild? Oh, she just used to question everything, you know. I have arguments with the lecturers, things like that. What else? Kate had a drink problem. How uh, noticeable was that? Well, it wasn't at first, but as the year went on, she'd be drunk in the afternoon. But I th think she cut down, you know, towards the end of college and when she started her PhD. Ah, uh, that's all for the moment. Thank you. Best to knock on the window for Emma. Simon always answers the front door. You know what this is? Yeah. Yeah, I think Emma had one like it. Actually, you know what? Kate had one. I remember because I asked her about it one night when we were all out drinking. In college. I was probably pretty drunk. That's what college is all about. Be back later on, if that's okay.
A uh, few more questions, if you don't mind. Aha. So how did you know Kate was wearing a freedom necklace 18 months ago at college? Well, I, I knew Kate at college, but I, I didn't get to know her till, till we started Atlas. Right. So you didn't socialise with her at college? No. And you didn't socialise with her outside of Atlas? Uh, no. You didn't see her outside Atlas at all? Um... No, no, <laughs> not at all. I'm a police officer, Detective Inspector Jenks. It's all right, you can carry on if you want to. I'm just going. I'm investigating a, a death in the village, Kate Vine. There was a death recently Hello. in the... Hello, I knew her. Well, could I ask you a few questions, please? A bit dark. Well, if you give me your name and address, I'll come later on. Where do you live? Borough House. And what's your name? According to the map, Abbey Farm is across the road there. frames with black painted glass. Very interesting. Ask you a few more questions, please. Didn't take you long. Haven't got much time. Just close the doors, shall I? Where do you want to sit? Oh, anywhere is fine. I uh, didn't quite catch your name, James. Sit there. Thank you, James. Why are you asking me about Kate Vine? Routine. You know Simon, don't you, Thompson? Why, what did he say? That you all went to college together, you and Kate. Is that right? Might have done. Right. Good enough. Now, what's all this stuff in the workshop? Paint and stencils and things like that? Just a little sideline of mine. Oh, you do picture framing. They're black mirrors. Scrying mirrors. Now, what's a scrying mirror? Show you one if you want. <laughs> scrying goes back centuries. The ancient Persians did it. This country pagans still practice it. The fortune tellers pretend to do it. That's what the crystal ball's all about. It's all scrying. The mirror's just one way of doing it. But what is scrying? Depends who you are. People do it for different reasons. What sort of reasons? Exploring your mind. Clearing your mind. Communicating with the dead. Is that what you use them for, James? 
communicating with the dead. And they make them for other people these days. And there's a market for these, is there? Lots of people want to talk to the dead. Even if they don't believe in it. Do you make a profit on them? I don't do it for the money. How very charitable of you. Can I keep this? Keep it. Thank you. Black mirrors and hookah pipes. I wonder what else James is into. Ever seen one of these before? Freedom necklace. Don't think so. Have you uh, ever tried Simon's homebrew? Thompson's tar? Yeah, I've tried it. Did he sell it? Well, not to me, not for money anyway. We used to trade stuff. What did you trade? I make a nice herbal tea as it happens. Him and his girlfriend were into it. What was his beer like? Lethal. Strong. Fuck your eyes out. What do you know about Simon's bike? What bike? You haven't seen him on a bike? I haven't seen him. When was the last time you saw him? About a month ago. Did you know whether Kate had lost this or not? <laughs> no idea. When was the last time you saw Kate Vine? Can't remember. How did you know her? Uh, through Simon. His girlfriend was mates with her. Saw her around college a few times. Did you socialise with her much? Nah. She wasn't my type. Thank you. Probably be back later. Broken window, recently smashed by the look of it. Might have to ask about that. Hmm. I wonder whose mask this is. Rebecca's or Ryan's? Just looks like junk, but it's too dark to tell. Detective Inspector Jenks. Rebecca, is it? Yeah. Mm. There's been an uh, incident in the village. I'm conducting an investigation. Could I ask you a few questions, please? Right. Come through. Thank you.
What's it about? There's been an unexplained death locally, not sure if you've heard. The student? Yes. Yes, it was dreadful news. You're married to Ryan, one of the Atlas leaders, yes? I suppose I am, yes. Well, I just wanted to ask a few questions about Kate and Atlas, if that's okay. I don't know if I'll be able to answer any of them, but sure. Do you know what this is? Oh, you'll have to ask Ryan about that. So this is Ryan's. It's to do with one of Ryan's methods on the course. Go on. Well, masks allow you to play it being someone different for a while. Students find it quite liberating. So this would be for a student? I think that one's Ryan's, but students do wear them, yes. Uh, that's all for the moment. Thank you. A few more questions, if you don't mind. How did the window get broken out round the back? I don't actually know. Um, someone said two girls were arguing outside. I found out after they'd gone. And when was this? Last Friday, just after we opened, about half past six. I taped over it until I can get it fixed. We don't want people getting cut and suing us. Does that sort of thing happen a lot? Arguments? No, not really. I'm quite strict when it comes to boring clients I don't think are um, suitable. Have you seen one of these before? Is it meant to be black like that? I think so. No. Do you recognise this? I've seen students wearing them. It has some sort of meaning, doesn't it? I forget what it is now. Seen anyone wearing one recently? Not that I can remember. Know anything about Simon Thompson's homebrew? Does he make homebrew? Apparently. No, we do buy from a microbrewery, but we don't usually buy from kitchen breweries. Have you seen this before? <clears throat> no, sorry. So you didn't know if Kate had lost it? No idea. Did you know Kate? Not very well. She came in a few times, but she was quite a moody person. You could tell she had problems. When was the last time you saw her? Friday. She popped in for a minute. And when was that? Uh, seven-ish. Was she on her own? I didn't see who she was with. She put £20 on the bar and then left. What was that for? A breakage, presumably. £20? Just for a beer glass? <laughs> well, she was very drunk. She just put it on the bar and then walked out. Was there a broken glass? Not that I noticed. But she was a strange girl. Aha. Uh -huh. So, you said Kate gave you £20 for a breakage, but you didn't have a breakage. That's right. Do you think the payment could have been for the broken window? Could it have been Kate who was arguing? Well, I suppose it could have been, yeah. Could have been Kate, you're probably right, yeah. But you don't know who she was arguing with? No, I'm not sure. I'll ask around. Not realising Kate had broken the window. 
Rebecca really should have worked that out before now. Unless she did. But why would she lie about that? Be back later on, if that's okay. A uh, few more questions, if you don't mind. Know anything about an argument at the pub last Friday? No, I didn't go to the pub last Friday. What did you do after the course? Just went home. Came here. Just came straight back. Have a look at this. Know anything about that? I haven't seen this one, but it looks a lot like an Atlas mask. Uh, we use them for some of the um, some of the workshops and stuff. Really? How? Well, you um, you have to say something uh, boastful or uh, or arrogant. You do it first without the mask, and then you say it with a mask. And the point is? Well, it's easier when you have the mask on, isn't it? People are not as afraid to be free about themselves, you know. What did you find out about Atlas? Well, it was advertised. Um, actually, I think I've still got the... Uh, <clears throat> this is the advert that was at my college. Uh, to be honest, I've learned more in three months at Atlas than I did in three years at business school. Can I keep that? Yeah, go for it. I suppose that might be useful as a conversational starter. Do you know anything about a broken window at the pub? No, I don't really go to the pub very often. I'm not exactly a pub person. Ever seen one of these? <laughs> yeah, that's one of James's. He's into like new age stuff, mysticism, magic spells, that sort of thing. He's nuts, though. I mean, he thinks the government are tracking him. Or <laughs> Why would he think that? Well, I don't know. You'd have to ask him. OK, that's it for now. Thank you. Have you seen one of these before? Is that from James? Now, what do you know about James? That he's creepy. <sighs> he was selling them last Friday at the market. There's, there's a market every week type thing. And, uh... I usually go there for lunch. So you wouldn't buy one of these? No, I wouldn't. But Kate would. Was she uh, into this sort of thing? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think so. She bought one, and uh, I went round to her flat to try it out. You're meant to see ghosts or spirits or something. It doesn't work. How do you use it? You're just meant to stare into it. Shall I show you? Go ahead. Okay, so you just, you just stare, stare like this, and uh, then you see... See what? Sorry, um, <laughs> uh, look, uh, you just, you're meant to see a ghost or something, look, it doesn't work didn't work, so. Know anything about a broken window at the pub around the back? The pub? Um, a broken window at the back? Yeah, yeah I saw it was broken. When was that? I was in the pub on Monday with a college friend. Ever seen this before? Nope, I haven't, sorry. I think I'd have remembered it. Did you hear about an argument in the pub last Friday? No, I wasn't there. You weren't in the village? No, I went home last... 
last Thursday night, actually, to see my parents. But you do visit the park. Oh, but yeah. I mean, I, I know Rebecca quite well. We we all went there quite a bit after college. You went home to see your parents on Thursday night, that right? Uh, yes. But you said you saw James at the market on Friday. He, um, no, I went to um, I went to see my parents on Friday night. What time did you go on Friday? Um, eight or nine. And you didn't see Kate at all on no. Friday. No. You're not a very good liar, Emma. Okay. I saw Kate. Where? At the pub, we were arguing. Go on. What were you arguing about? I, uh, I'd lent her fifty pounds because she was desperate, and w we were just arguing. I, I, it didn't really bother me. She just didn't have it. And Kate broke the window. Yes. She, she did things like that when she was angry. Smash things. Yes. So it was Emma arguing with Kate. But why didn't she want to admit it? In case it gave her a motive. Or something else. What do you know about Atlas? I know that it's, um, it's a business course. I went with Simon when he first went, but it wasn't really my thing. How often did you go? Just the once. And you decided it wasn't for you? Yeah, I'd been to something similar, so I decided it wasn't for me. So you lent money to Kate because she was desperate, but she bought loads of jewellery and things. So why were you lending her money? Well, no, it's because, um... It was... It's... It wasn't about money. Was it, Emma? No. Go on. What was it really about? We were arguing because 
she was going to blackmail Ryan, the guy from Atlas, over an affair he was having and then tell his wife if he didn't give her the money. Ryan's affair with Kate? No, I don't know. I think he was having an affair with another student and Kate found out. And why were you involved? Because I didn't really agree with it. I didn't agree with what she was doing, even if he did have an affair. Were you friends with Ryan? No, I'd never met him. You just thought Kate was wrong? Yeah. Hmm, not sure about this. Emma's either on a moral crusade, or there's another reason she was worried about Kate blackmailing Ryan. Aha! You said you went to an Atlas meeting with Simon? Yes. That's interesting, because I happen to know that Ryan is the main lecturer at Atlas. But you say you never met him. Why did you say you don't know him? Okay, I, I, need, I need to tell you something. I just need to make sure Simon doesn't find out. I won't be telling Simon anything he doesn't have to hear. And you can't tell Rebecca either. Go on. Okay, so the affair that happened was was between Ryan and I. I was having the affair, and Kate knew. So Kate was blackmailing both of you? No, she didn't care about me. It was part of the course, you see, having to take all these risks. She thought it was funny to turn her back on Ryan. She thought I wouldn't care. But you did. Yes, I was already with Simon when Ryan and I... <laughs> You know, and I didn't want Simon finding out, and Kate thought that he wouldn't, but I didn't want her risking it. And then if Rebecca found out, then Simon would definitely have found out, and then it would have blown up and it would have just been a big mess. And so you just argued and... what? <sighs> well, she just stormed off and broke a window. And that was it? You didn't see her again that night? No. Are you sure? Yes. I promise. mind not defacing public property, please? What's it to you? Well, I'm a policeman. And that's supposed to make what difference exactly? It means that you do exactly what I tell you to do. Or what? Or you arrest me? No, I'll give you a fine this time. So, if I do something that you don't like, I have to give you some money? What happens if you do something that I don't like? You're going to give me some money? Look, I do not have time to discuss it at the moment. Can you just go... Pathetic. What a prize brat. But why would he carve that into a tree? Either he's a die-hard rock fan or there's more to that symbol than meets the eye. What is that? Uh, chili pork. Oh, no, I knew you were a cook. Oh, no, I used to. Used to be more into it. No, I don't do it so much. Used to grow my own herbs and everything. Not here? Uh, no, uh, at the farmhouse where you used to live. Oh, where was that? That's where James lives. Yeah, we used to share a house together. The farmer used to let us use a corner on his greenhouse to grow stuff. I 
didn't know you knew James that well. Well, didn't really get on. Where are the greenhouses? Well, it's just through the farmyard at the back. Interesting. If I did uh, this, would that mean anything to you? <laughs> Who did you see doing that? Someone in the woods, carving it into a tree. That was Kyle. It's a guy from the course, he's an idiot. And where does he live? I can't remember, somewhere outside the village? The three fingers thing is something the students started doing. It's something from the course. The, uh, the three freedoms. The what? The three freedoms? It's from the course. It's um, a phrase. Free to be free. Free yourself from the things that are holding you back, right? Uh, things that stop you being successful. What are they? There's uh, uh, fear of failure, uh, guilt, and uh, a doubting, uh, a self-doubt. You believe that? Yeah. Guilt ruins lives. It stops you looking forward. It... <clears throat> It serves no practical purpose. It's basically destructive. Right. Free to be free. Not the most original slogan, but I wonder how far this freedom goes. Thank you. Probably be back later. Simon mentioned another greenhouse on the farm. A few more questions, if you don't mind. Ah, uh, that's all for the moment. Thank you. A uh, few more questions, if you don't mind. If I did this, would it mean anything to you? No. Why? It's okay. Thanks. Do you know the phrase, free to be free? Yeah. It's an Atlas thing. I first heard it when I went with Simon. What did they say about it? They said that you shouldn't feel guilty if you do something wrong. I don't agree with that. No? No. No, I think you should feel guilty if you do something wrong. What did uh, Simon think? I don't know, but I don't think he agreed with that either. Be back later on, if that's okay. Couple more questions, if that's okay. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you.
I wonder if James knows this is here. Don't know what it is, but it'd be interesting to see what he says about it. Questions, please. Thank you. Do you know what these are? Ah, oh, magic mint. Where did you find this? Magic mint. Salvia divinorum. I used to grow it years ago. It makes you trip. In what way? It's a hallucinogenic and legal. Quite a dangerous combination, really. Do you use it? <laughs> Me? No. <laughs> No, I don't even take medicines. I um, I like to stay pure. I didn't expect Rebecca to know about growing drugs. I know she claims not to use them herself, but I'm not so sure. Ever heard the phrase "free to be free"? Do you mean the Atlas thing? Yes, I have. Know what it means? It means being free of guilt. What do you think about that? You mean, do I think it's a bad thing? Do you? I mean, surely if you have done something wrong. Oh, but that's the point, Inspector. Most people spend their time feeling guilty over nothing, and that's not a good thing. If I did this, would that mean anything to you? Why is it meant to mean something? No, no, it's okay. What do you know about this? It's an advertisement. They had it designed by an agency, I think. And when was that? Last year sometime. Thank you. Probably be back later. Private eye. Uh, no, I'm a police inspector. Who are you looking for? I'm investigating a death in the village. That student, then. They did one last year, too. Same place. Did what? Drowned a student. Ask that psycho about it. He runs that business cult thing up at the, the big house. Bunch of nut jobs. Uh, uh, hey, uh, what was the student's name? Liam something. Or sod. Atlas's reputation precedes them. I think I might call the station, find out a bit more about this Liam. Mike, uh, it's Jenks. All right, Jenks, I thought you'd clocked off tonight. Yeah, the Chief's put me on a case tonight, the Edenton girl. Friday night, you poor sod. I thought that was sorted out anyway. I wish it was. Listen, are you near a computer? Uh, I can't be. Yeah, go on. Do you know anything about a death last year? Someone called Liam in Edenton Village? Uh, I don't remember it. Hang on, let's have a look. Edenton Village. Uh, yeah, Liam Rogers. It's a suicide. Last year. Suicide? I've gone two suicides in two years, both on Eden. Blimey, you've got your work cut out, Jexy. <sighs> yeah, don't I know it? <sighs> right, well, good luck with that and see you Monday. Thanks, Mike. As 
ask you a couple more things, please? Did you know Liam? Liam who? Liam who died. You mean... Liam who killed himself? Yeah. He was in my year, on a different course. What course was Liam on? Can't remember, not mine. What was yours? Plant science. First time I knew about Liam was when he killed himself. Right, so you didn't meet him? No. Ever heard of Salvia Divinorum, James? Was that skin cream? <sighs> it's not a skin cream, no. It's a plant. Really? Don't know much about plants. So you've never heard of Salvia? No. Could you tell me what these are, please? I found them in the greenhouse. Been snooping around on the farm, have we? It's called investigating, James. Yeah. It's just mint. Mint leaves. For cooking. Yeah, I, uh... I heard you were a bit of a budding chef. Dabble a bit. Won a few competitions. Very impressive. So you normally just leave packets of mint lying around? Must have dropped it. Ever hear the phrase, free to be free? Heard anyone use that? Nah. What is it, a song? No, I don't think so. Doesn't matter. If I did that, would it mean anything to you? Yeah. It's a Satanism symbol. Satanists use it. Have you ever seen anyone using it? Lots of people. Politicians, presidents, CEOs. Have you ever seen anyone local using it? Not that I remember. Ever seen one of these? Seen them around college. What do you know about it? Not much. It's a business course. Ask Simon. He's on it. You wouldn't be interested in that sort of thing? <sighs> and you haven't discussed it with Simon? Not really. Business doesn't interest me. Know anything about an argument at the pub last Friday? No. Ever seen this before? No, should I have? No, it's okay. Know anything about a broken window at the pub? Don't go to the pub. You've never been to the pub? I didn't say that. I've been to the pub, but... Not about two months, three months. So, your degree is in plant science, but you don't seem to know anything about plants. Well, I've still got a lot to learn. So you're still saying you've never heard of salvia? Didn't say that. So you have? Maybe. And you do grow it? Yeah, it's legal, why not? What do you do with it? I use it for explorative purposes, meditation. And does this involve anybody else? Why? Do you sell it or give it to anybody else? Sure. Yeah, it's just for me, nobody else. And that's the only drug you grow, is it? Feel free to go and look if you want. It's okay, I'll look later. The only drug he grows? <laughs> Not sure I believe that, James. Then again, would someone growing illegal drugs bother growing a legal one?
Aha. When you say herbal tea, do you mean salvia? Probably. So you traded salvia tea with Simon for his homebrew. So. So why did you say you didn't give salvia to anybody else? Did you give it to anybody else? How many people did you give it to? Did you give it to Kate? No. How about Liam? I didn't have anything to do with him dying, if that's what you mean. So you did give him salvia? Yes, I gave him salvia because he asked for it. But that's not what killed him. Well, he committed suicide, James, because of psychological issues that probably weren't helped by him trying hallucinogenic drugs. He didn't commit suicide. You don't know anything about him. You don't know what happened. Okay. So what happened then? Do you even know about Third Eye? Go on. You don't know about Third Eye. You don't know about Third Eye. You know nothing about Liam's death. I mean, forget Salvia. Fine, tell me then. Third Eye was a cult. We had our very own psycho cult operating right here from our village hall. And I got rid of them, single-handed. I'm the one who got rid of Third Eye. Did they tell you that at the station? Okay, okay, start again. They were what? You don't know anything, do you? Look. They were reeling in students, pretending to be some sort of happy life course, you know. We can make your life better sort of crap. Then they were putting everyone through this brainwashing program to make them compliant. And selling them on. It's all there. What do you mean, selling them on? Selling them. Objects. Commodities. To who? To anyone who could afford them. Top politicians, famous celebrities, wealthy businessmen, you name it. What for? You don't get it, do you? Third Eye were making and selling slaves. They were black market slave traders. They were wiping people's personalities using ECT, brainwashing, cocktails of hard drugs, deliberately turning them into perfect slaves. You know how much slaves are worth on the black market these days? No. Millions. And I'm talking per slave. That's why anyone who stood up to them and threatened to go public like Liam was just killed off. They didn't give a damn. So you're saying Liam was murdered by Third Eye? Exactly what I'm saying. So I started looking into it. (laughs) They're all saying it was suicide, but there's no way. So, did you ever actually meet Liam? I found out about him. And how did you find out about all this other stuff? Well, it's obvious, you can tell. I met some of the students. You could see straight away there was something wrong. They were like zombies. And I can tell when someone's got ECT damage or when they've been through mind conditioning. It's just obvious. The US military used all these techniques back in the 50s. It's all documented. You can read about it. They showed all the same signs. So did you ever actually go to a meeting? No, but I knew what went on. How? From what people said who'd been through it. Okay, so do you know anyone I could speak to who did go through it? Well, no. Look, it doesn't matter. Why did they close down if it wasn't true? They just closed down and disappeared overnight after I put all the flyers up. Bit of a coincidence. But that was just after Liam died. Yeah. And do you think that had anything to do with it? Maybe, but but it was the flyers that forced them to close. (sighs) Okay. Do you mind if I keep this? Yeah, you investigate it. It'll all come out. Third Eye definitely killed Liam. Well, that was a lot to take in. Does James really believe all this stuff? This is the first I've heard about Third Eye. Question is, what's their connection with Atlas, if there is one? Ryan was interviewed in the lounge, according to the report. 
That must be his office. Ryan! Yes? Detective Inspector Jenks, I'm conducting an investigation in the area. Wouldn't mind asking you a few questions, all right? <sighs> Come in, Inspector. Thank you. <laughs> Drink, Inspector. I'd better not, eh? So you wanted to speak to me? I believe that uh, Kate Vine was a student at Atlas. <sighs> Kate Vine? Well, yes, she was. All of this has been thoroughly investigated, Inspector. It was suicide. Well, we have reason to believe there may be rather more to it than that. Really? Then, in that case, I'd be prepared to assist in any way possible. Thank you. My pleasure. What do you know about this? Not much. So you've never seen this before? You don't know anything about Third Eye? Well, I don't remember seeing it, now. You don't recognize any of the symbols on it? No, sorry. What can you tell me about Liam? Oh, Liam. You mean the boy who committed very unfortunate, isn't it? Did you know him? Oh, yes, yes. Well, why would I say know him? I met him in the pub. Seemed very happy sort of person. Well, I say he seemed happy. He can't have been, can he? <laughs> have you ever heard of Salvia Divinorum? No. Um, what is it? It's a hallucinogenic plant. A legal one. At least for the moment. I've no interest in drugs, Inspector. My job. That's the only drug I need. As trite as that may sound. Do you know any students who may have used hallucinogens? No. No, my students aren't interested in that kind of thing. Besides, no one is allowed drugs or alcohol onto the site. I don't think anyone has ever brought drugs to Atlas. Do you have any medicines on site at all? No, we're not allowed. Insurance purposes. Do you know what this is? Looks like uh, chopped tea bags to me. <laughs> what is it? I just thought you might know. I don't know anything about plants, Inspector. What you should do is ask Rebecca. She knows far more about these things than I do. Uh, messy things, <laughs> growing things. <laughs> Can you tell me a bit about the phrase free to be free? <laughs> <laughs> free to be free, my favourite motto. Well, we teach our students that people, uh, well, they suffer from excessive guilt, don't they? Excessive self-criticism, excessive doubt. Evils of excess, we call them. <laughs> and we tell our students that if they rid themselves of these evils, then they're free to realise their full potential. Who came up with all this? I have a background in psychology. Honestly? Yeah, don't look so surprised, Inspector. Uh, there's an intellect lurking in here. When did you come up with the phrase? Uh, when we were based at the village hall. Uh, when I say we, I came up with the phrase. Uh, Dad's more the money man. And very successful at it too, I hear. Oh, he's successful. Uh, but he's not a creative man. Dad suffers from a, a lack of imagination. If I did this, would that mean anything to you? It's a devil sign, isn't it? Is that what you're getting at, Inspector? This is not something you use on the course. Of course it's not something we use on the course, Inspector. I don't even know what that could possibly mean, exactly. Tell me about this. Ah, it's, uh, that's the first one we ever had made. We had it designed by an agency after we'd spent weeks trying to trying to find a name for this place. It took you weeks? I don't like that, Inspector. I thought it was a rather grand name. Actually, if I'm being honest, I plucked it out of thin air one night in the George while I was having a few gin and tonics. Well, actually, somebody left a book and I stole it. Do you know anything about an argument in the pub last Friday? What time? I believe it wasn't long after the pub opened. No, 
I usually leave for the manor house about six. Uh, I start preparations around 6.30. I like to get a head start. Can you tell me about this? Haven't seen that for a while. They had a friend who used to make them for us for the course. He passed away last year. What does the uh, symbol mean? Uh, it's borrowed from paganism. It's the symbol of the triple goddess. The mother, maiden and crone, represented by the waxing and waning of the moon. Uh, it's an ancient symbol. It predates Christianity. Some people say that it dates back to Paleolithic times. And is that uh, relevant to the course? Well, no, no, no. I mean, it, it's a symbol we, we dabbled with, but it's not particularly relevant. We don't use it on the course, no. What do you know about the broken window at the back of the pub? Oh, uh, Rebecca told me about it. I don't know how it got smashed, though. I told her to tape over it. We can't have anybody cutting themselves. You have to be very health and safety conscious these days. <laughs> have you seen one of these before? I believe that uh, looks like a scrying mirror to me. You have seen one before? Hmm. Well, I, I, I used to have one myself, actually, along with lots of other bits and pieces of that nature. Silly things, you know. Really? Yes. I, when I was in my teenage years, <laughs> I had quite an obsession with that kind of thing. I, uh, I was a very somber child, and well, not that you could tell, always playing fantasy games, reading books about that kind of malarkey, you know. What sort of books did you read? Well, uh, books on black magic, not the chocolates. Um, witchcraft, satanic rituals, that kind of thing. I, I grew out of it, of course. But you're not into that sort of thing now. <laughs> of course I'm not. Uh, but, I mean, I, I don't need to believe in the supernatural, Inspector. The natural world is far more interesting. Don't you think so? Know what this is? Yes. It's a freedom necklace. Uh, it's a symbol that we use on the course. It's supposed to represent freedom from the chains of your ancestry. Have you ever bought one of these? I haven't, but I've seen the students wearing them. Have you tried Simon's homebrew? Does he make homebrew? <laughs> no, I haven't had the pleasure, sorry. Does Simon Thompson ride a bike, do you know? I think so, yes. I, th I think he drives as well, but I might be mistaken. Have you seen this before? Psh, not that I recall. You don't know whether Kate had lost this or not? Uh, uh, no, I've, I've never seen it before, sorry. Ryan, you've just told me all about the moon symbols on the mask. Then you're claiming you don't know anything about the symbols on the flyer. It's all the same thing. Oh, actually, yes. Sorry, yes. Yes, I do remember that. So what did you know about Third Eye? Oh, not much, really. Never came into contact with them. That explanation was way too short. Ryan's definitely hiding something.
I believe the last time you saw Kate Vine was at the pub last Friday, then you came straight back with some of the students, is that right? Uh, yes, I like to have a glass of port or two after a long day, and benefits of being married to the landlady. How did she seem that night? The landlady? Kate. Oh, Kate. Uh, well, she was her usual self, drunk. That was usual. It was for her, yes. I mean, it didn't impair her ability, though. She was a very bright star, lots of potential, very enthusiastic. So she seemed to be enjoying the course? Well, as far as anybody could tell, yes. When did you first meet her? Uh, when she joined, about three months ago. And you hadn't met her before then? No. So you didn't suspect there was anything wrong? Well, do you mean, did I expect her to drown herself? Of course I didn't inspect her. It was quite a shock. Nobody expected that. Aha. According to the flyer, this Third Eye group was based at the Village Hall, is that right? Was it? Ah, that's where you were based, wasn't it? Um, yeah, you said you invented the Atlas phrase, free to be free, while you were based at the Village Hall. So I did. So you must have come into contact with Third Eye at some point. You were using the same hall. Well, I'm afraid I... I haven't been entirely honest with you, Inspector. Go on. You see, Third Eye... Third Eye is, or was, Atlas under a different name. Sorry. Atlas is Third Eye? In a new, improved form, yes. And you ran Third Eye? With Dad, yes. So you must have known Liam. You didn't just meet him, did you? Yes, I knew him, Inspector, but don't get your hopes up. All of this has been thoroughly investigated and cleared up. You've been investigated about his death? They dropped the case. We didn't have anything to do with it. Well, when I say dropped the case, I mean a police investigation is one thing, but what the public thinks is another. They threatened to go public, and then James Bloody Wilson started distributing his flyers, and that was it. No choice. It was an end to it. You had to change the name. We'd already paid the family an out-of-court settlement. We thought that was an end to it. Then James, his cronies, they wouldn't leave it alone. So we had to close down, buy a new place, rebrand. So eventually, we reopened here. As Atlas? As Atlas. And it worked? Uh, up till now, yes. So you knew James Wilson too? We knew James, but he didn't know us as such. Oh, he was very quick to shoot us down, but he didn't do anything like actually coming to the course to see what he was about. So James wouldn't know that you were now running Atlas. Not unless he came to one of our courses. And how much of all that stuff was true? ECT machines, brainwashing. <laughs> I'm afraid that that exists only exclusively in the mind of Mr. Wilson. All we do is make better business people. We challenge their prejudices and presumptions. Why don't you come along and see for yourself? The course starts in 15 minutes. Excuse me, Inspector. Hello. I can't come back now. Well, you have my car at the moment. All right. All right. See you later. Uh, that was Dad. I, I have to go back. You can come and meet him if you like. Well, I might come and have a chat. Come with me. A few more questions, if you don't mind. What do you know about this? 
So you've been graced with Goebbels' company already, have you? James, our local minister for propaganda. I suppose Ryan already told you about our actual previous incarnation. He explained, yes. Did he tell you anything scandalous? Not unless you count the suicide. Oh. These things happen. Was it your idea? The suicide? Third eye. Yeah, I suppose it was. As my son had started to atrophy, I decided I ought to give him something to do. And Third Eye was the same as Atlas, teaching business skills. Very similar. So Liam's death didn't prompt you to make any changes? There was nothing we could do about Liam's death, Inspector, any more than we could do anything about Kate's. It was out of our control. You can't blame me for wondering, Paul. Two student deaths in two years? It's called a coincidence, Inspector. I expect they ate fast food also. But you're not investigating all the local chippies, are you? How well did you know Liam? Liam who? Liam, who took his life. Oh. Well, as far as I remember, he was a good student, confident, outgoing. You didn't notice any problems? I believe he had problems at home. Were you there when he died? Yes. And afterwards? You didn't see him after the meeting? No. What was Liam like that night? No. Apart from being drunk, or possibly because of that, he seemed perfectly happy. He was drunk? Well, I assume the bottle in his hand contained whiskey and not lemonade. Lots of similarities to Kate, don't you think? Drinking, depression, is that normal for the students? People come into the Atlas course for quick solutions to their problems. And when they don't get them as quickly as they might have liked, sometimes their impatience gets the better of them. Have you ever heard of Salvia Divinorum, or Magic Mint? Sounds like it might be a drug. It's a hallucinogenic plant. Legal, as a matter of fact. I'm not a drug taker, Inspector. I have no enthusiasm for voluntarily poisoning your brain. And you've never seen anyone on the course taking it? Well, if someone had, they wouldn't have done it openly. We don't allow drugs or alcohol in our course. We like to tell the students that success is the best drug. Whether you buy into that, of course, is another matter. Know what this is, by any chance? I've no idea. Gardening isn't my kind of thing. Rebecca would probably know. I presume you've met Rebecca. Yes, I have. I'm sure she'd enjoy telling you what it is. She's the kind of woman who likes to feel superior. Would probably marry a millionaire and then decide to run her own pub. Yes, why was that? Well, she isn't exactly housewife material. She likes to be in control, like Wyatt. Shame, isn't it, that I'm in control of both of them? Can you tell me a little about the Atlas phrase, free to be free? Where did you hear that? I was talking to one of your students. It's a little phrase we conjured up to summarise our objectives. What is your objective, if you don't mind me asking? Mine, or do you mean the course's objective? On the course. The objective of the course is to free people from bondage. We teach that most people are crippled by their past, by guilt, their attitudes, their beliefs, all that kind of nonsense. Guilt cripples people. Feeling guilty in business is like a meat eater feeling guilty in an abattoir. Guilt comes from the archaic emotional centers of the brain. It's a vestige of our animal ancestry, that's all. In business, you heed it at your peril. I'm sorry, Inspector. My house appears to be haunted. Do you mind closing the door? So, 
You believe that guilt has no place in business? None at all. I have few beliefs, Inspector, but that's one of them. And what if you have done something wrong? <laughs> well, that's the whole point. Guilt has nothing to do with it. Hmm. Interesting opinion. If I did this, would it mean anything to you? I presume you've seen an Atlas student doing that. Ah, so this is an Atlas thing. Well, it wasn't exactly our idea. The students started doing it spontaneously to show commitment to the cause. Cute, really. Which student did you see doing that? I'm not sure, but he was carving it into a tree. I told him to stop. Did you really? Why? Defacing public property. <laughs> That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. What's the punishment for that kind of thing nowadays? Prison sentence? Oh, it's usually a fine. All right. What about defiling public liberty? Does that carry a fine too? Oddly enough, the student in question argued a similar point. Is that something you encourage on the Atlas course? We encourage people who put ideas first and moral anachronisms second. The problem with the law, Inspector, is that it's out of date. Well, I suppose that's a matter of opinion. However, you still respect it. Respect it? I abide by it. We all play by the book, Inspector. But that's only because of the threat of possible incarceration. Could you tell me a bit about this? Had it designed by an agency. Hmm. And when was that? Last year. Is that when you started the business? Yes, I suppose so. What did you hear about an argument in the pub last Friday? I didn't go to the pub last Friday. You didn't hear anything about an argument in the pub? Should I have? No, that's fine. What do you know about this? Looks like a mask. You don't recognise it? Not particularly. It looks like a monarch mask. What's a monarch mask? Monarch is a fancy dress. Outfitters. Ryan goes there sometimes. Have you ever seen one of these before? I believe it's a scrying mirror, pagan thing. Ever used one? Why would I use a scrying mirror? So you have no interest at all in this sort of thing? No. Does the Atlas course use them at all? Not at all. Strange question. What do you know about this? It's a freedom necklace. It's a symbol we use um, sometimes on the course. Little bird in cage flying away. Um, freeing themselves from their past is the analogy. So do they get them when they join the course or something? No, 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 not as a rule. I think I bought one once as a present. Oh, not uh, for Kate, by any chance? <laughs> no. Not for Kate. I can't really remember who it was for. A birthday present, maybe for one of the students. Which student? I've no idea. Ever tried Simon's homebrew? Simon Thompson? No, I haven't. I wouldn't touch anything that has had Simon's fingers in it. Have you seen this before? Looks familiar. Where did you find it? It was uh, in the woods. Presumably had something to do with Kate or a killer. Well, that's what I'm trying to establish. Shouldn't it be in an evidence bag, Inspector, in case of contamination? I didn't have one with me, unfortunately. Well, don't go testing it for DNA, will you? It's got yours all over it. Did you know anything about Simon Thompson's bike? No.
Do you know if Kate had lost this? It's her driving licence. How would I know that? You didn't see it lying around anywhere? No. How well did you know Kate? Hardly knew her at all. Uh, met her a few times. But the cause is about all. So when was the last time you saw her? Last uh, Friday. I just popped out of the course and uh, about seven. Did you speak to her then? It's possible. And how did she seem? Was she happy, sad, preoccupied? She was drunk. If you don't allow drink or drugs onto the site, why did you allow Liam to drink whiskey all night? Well, we did give him various warnings. Did try to stop him, but uh, didn't work. <laughs> but you let him stay on the course? Yeah, well, we couldn't throw him out. This isn't a primary school, Inspector. We're not the police. We can't enforce these rules. If they pay their fees, they're entitled to stay on the court. And what if they want to take drugs? As long as they do it with discretion, frankly, I don't care if they want to wipe or inject paint stripper all over their faces. Do you store any alcohol at Atlas? No. Is there a kitchen? Why, do you want to go down there and check? Well, obviously you wouldn't mind if what you're saying is true. Of course I wouldn't mind. It's past the lavatories down the corridor, but you won't find any drugs in there or alcohol. Whether I find alcohol at Atlas or not, it probably isn't particularly relevant. But it's worth a look anyway. Thank you. Probably be back later. So the kitchen must be down the corridor there, if what Paul said is true. Interesting. Well, there's a TV right there with a DVD player. I don't think anyone will mind if I have a quick look at this. Well, that was odd. Looked like someone pickpocketing. But why make a video of it?
A uh, few more questions, if you don't mind. Have you seen this before? No. No, sorry. Ah, uh, that's all for the moment. Thank you. Have you seen this before? No. I don't think so. Be back later on, if that's okay. Questions, if that's okay. Do you know anything about this? No, sorry. Ask Ryan. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you. more questions please thank you seen this before the writing looks familiar but no thank you probably be back later a couple more things, please. Seen this before? No, what is it? Do you recognise it? No. Should I? Thank you. Probably be back later. Someone clearly wanted that back. Nice and helpful of them to leave a piece of evidence behind, though. questions if you don't mind have you seen this before no i don't think so you don't recognize the shop no is there someone else who works at atlas someone who may have been there tonight no there's a cleaner comes at strange times but then he's a strange boy work experience as a cleaner well we did try him in accounts but didn't work out Aha! Do you visit Monarch Costumes a lot? 
No, I used to go in there occasionally. Why? But you do know the shop. Yes, of course I do. You see, Paul, I thought you said you didn't know where this bag was from. Well, maybe I do. This was used to put over my head, Paul, by a mugger. Would you like to tell me something? Are you suggesting that I had something to do with your mugging? Did you? You really ask the most ridiculous questions. Of course I didn't. So why did you lie about the shop? Well, I didn't have anything to do with your mugging inspector, but I might know somebody who did. Go on. Did Ryan mention Jason to you, the cleaner? Unfortunately, Ryan at some point told Jason that the DVD mustn't be removed from the site. So, when he saw you take it, he simply thought that he was doing us a favour by uh, getting it back. He isn't exactly what you'd call one of Darwin's best examples. So what's on the DVD that's so special? All right, it was something I did myself, a little stunt I pulled to amuse the students. What kind of stunt? I pretended to steal from the students. I emphasised the word pretended. The students knew all about it afterwards. Everything was above board. Steal from students? Why? We were doing a piece about pushing the limit, so I decided I... I would show them how it was done. Oh, don't look so serious, Inspector. I returned everybody's things immediately afterwards. No harm done. And when was this? Last year sometime. At Third Eye or Atlas? Third Eye, I think. And this was before or after Liam died? Well, since you'll probably find out anyway, it happened to be on the night that Liam died, as it happens. Before you ask. No. I didn't steal from him. Do you think it's a good idea to encourage students to steal, Paul? I wasn't encouraging students to steal. Policemen are so literal. Life is shades of grey, Inspector. Much as the force might like it, it doesn't divide neatly into blacks and whites. Now, if you don't mind, you'd have to excuse me for a moment. You know where the door is. I see he was quick enough to claim he didn't steal from Liam. What kind of stunt was that anyway? And Liam dying later the same night? It's just all a bit too suspicious. yet and uh, time's ticking by. Leave. Okay.
So, those are Ryan's guitars, kept in a garage. Not really the best place to keep them. Ask about a few more things, please. What do you know about Ryan's guitar collection? I know he plays, because he tried to buy one off me. Do you play? I used to. I used to be in a band, but I was a singer as well, so I got away with it. Singer as well? <laughs> yeah, I used to sing in a band every night. But uh, sometimes it was in a pub, but usually at Rebecca's. What was that called? It was called Blackstone. And uh, this guy from a record company once came to see us and he said the band was rubbish but that I was good. So after that I don't think they liked me much and then we broke up after college. Can't hide talent. What do you know about doll burning? Doll burning? I think it was something that they did on the course. Simon mentioned it. Oh, they didn't do that when you were there? No. What do you know about Paul Rand? Paul the Slime. You've obviously met him then. <sighs> yes, I have. What do you know about him committing a fake theft during one of the courses? What, about him going through people's bags? Yeah, he tried that thing on me as well, weirdo. So you were at Third Eye? Yes. Yes, I, I went there for a few months after college and I left because I hated it. And I didn't know Atlas was the same thing. And I went with Simon. Does Simon know that? No. I didn't want to burst his bubble, so I didn't say anything. So he doesn't know you went to Third Eye? No. Ah! So is that where you met Ryan as well? Yep. Right. What, uh, what didn't you like about the course? Well, it was just... It was stupid. They just made you do things to other people and be abusive just to prove that you could, and I absolutely hated it. What sort of things? Oh, just stupid things, nasty things to prove that you could do it. It was about not feeling guilty. And it was horrible, that's why I left. And is Simon doing all of this stuff now? No. No, I, I think they had to stop because it was just getting ridiculous. I think somebody got arrested or something. Very interesting. Do you uh, know the shop? Have you used it? No, but I know where it is. Have you seen this? Yeah. It was all over college last year. James made it. Idiot. So you don't agree with what I'm saying? No, I don't agree with anything James says. He's absolutely crazy. He thinks that the government has been controlled by aliens, that we're all bugged. He's nuts. What do you know about a student called Liam who committed suicide last year? Um... Only that I didn't know him really well. Ever heard of Salvia Divinorum? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. It's a drug, isn't it? Yeah, hallucinogenic drug. Ever tried it? No, no, I've never taken any illegal substances. You know what these are, by any chance? No. Sorry. I I don't know anything about plants or things like that, but you should ask Rebecca. She used to live on a farm. She'd know. you sang in Blackstone 
Who else was in the band? Um, just a few people from college. Including Liam? Yeah. Why did you say you didn't know him? No, it's, it's not that. I just thought you meant that I didn't know about his suicide. Did you? No, I was <clears throat> away on a holiday. When he died? Yeah, I only knew him through the band. She definitely knows more than she's saying. She was in a band with Liam, but didn't know about his problem? I'm not sure I believe you, Emma. So, you witnessed Paul's money-stealing stunt, is that right? Yes. But you weren't there when Liam died? No. Don't quite understand that, you see, because Paul pulled the stunt on the same night. Liam died later that evening. Um, I, uh, I must have got mixed up. So you don't know anything about Liam's death, even though you were there on that night? N no. Emma. I think you better explain, don't you? Well, it was the stupid course, wasn't it? Go on. <sighs> well, we were all told to do stupid things and... and then that thieving thing happened and so... Take a breath, Emma. <sighs> Liam killed himself because of me. Why? Um... Liam had a a birthmark on the side of his face and no one would mention anything even though we all knew it was there and we all thought they all thought it was ugly so I thought I'd say something and I I even asked Paul if it was okay to say it what did he say? he said he wouldn't mind Then Liam killed himself. Liam's dead because of me. Well, Emma, I'm quite sure you regret what you said, but I really don't think you caused Liam's death. There's always more to these things than meets the eye. It wasn't your fault. We can't tell Simon, please. Simon doesn't need to know. Don't worry. Thank you. I never remember to buy one.
There's the mask symbol again. Looks like someone's been trying to make a point. more questions, if you don't mind. Have you seen these before? Mm. No. Don't know the car. What do you know about Ryan's guitar collection? Uh, not a whole lot. I know he brought a guitar to one of the groups once, at the end of one of the stages. That's the only time I've seen him with a guitar. What do you know about doll burning? Not on the course. It's a ritual thing. It's uh, getting rid of things that you don't need. Throw it into the fire. And that's a good thing? Well, yeah, it helps you getting rid of things you don't need. So you can move on, take control again. So what are the masks for? They're just to help you get into the right frame of mind. Uh, just get you into the zone, you know, help with the trance. A trance? Yeah, yeah. It's like... Um, it's like self-hypnosis. We do it on the course sometimes. It's just to help you get into the right frame of mind, you know? So you hypnotize yourself. How do you do that? Just stare into a mirror and chant something, you know, just say the same thing over and over again. Or you could just close your eyes and put yourself into a trance. Some people can do that. And that's safe? Well, yeah. Hypnosis doesn't work the way that most people think it does. You can't just be hypnotized if you don't want to be hypnotized. But you can learn to hypnotize yourself. What did you say it was called? Auto-hypnosis? Self-hypnosis, auto-hypnosis, same thing really. I think Simon was a bit too quick to play down the role of auto-hypnosis on the course. I'll have to uh, ask around about this. What do you know about Paul stealing money from students? Part of a stunt or something? What, did he do that? I, I've never heard about anything like that. No, it might be part of the risk-taking thing, though. Explain that. Well, it's, it's part of the course. You have to do something dangerous or risky, uh, something you wouldn't normally do. Something dangerous? Well, not dangerous, just, just risky. Like um, saying something you wouldn't normally say to someone or uh, doing something unusual. Like stealing from other students. Well, we didn't do anything like that, but... You have to tell everyone at the end of the course anyway. And you're not allowed to do anything that would hurt or offend anyone. Or you're not allowed to do anything really bad. It's all pretend, really. It seems a bit odd for a business course. It works, though. You seen this? You know the shop? Yeah, yeah, I know the shop. I hired something from them last year, I think. It's for a party, I assume. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Have you seen this before? Oh, is this the thing that James did? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. What do you know about all this? A third eye, I think they were called? I don't really know anything about it. I mean, I've heard about Liam's death, but all I know about three eyes or whatever is, is on this fire. So you hadn't heard about third eye? No, sorry. What do you know about Liam? Liam? Local lad. Took his mind. Oh, that Liam! Yeah, yeah, I heard about him. But you didn't know him? No, I... I know he went to college, but... Didn't really know him. It's sad, though. Ever heard of Salvia Divinorum? Salvia Divinorum? Uh, no, Magic Mint. Same thing. Oh, yeah, you mean the drug? Yeah, yeah, yeah I've heard of that. Yeah, I've tried it. But well, once or twice, yeah. But it's not really my sort of thing. It messes with your brain. I've never tried any other drugs either. One, well, nothing like that. Nothing hallucinogenic. You know what these are? No. They look a bit like sage leaves. I haven't seen them before, though. Not at all, no.
Thank you. Probably be back later. A few more questions, if you don't mind. Do you know what this is? Well, I think it's a bag. <laughs> is it a bag, Inspector? The shop. Oh, yes, the costume shop. Yes, we used to hire from them. For the course? Well, yes. For the course, at the end of each stage, we have a, a, a little party and we ask students to dress up or try acting out uh, being somebody new. Their new selves, as it were. Could you explain a bit more? New selves? Hmm. One of the main elements of the course is learning how to act. How to be whoever you need to be in any given situation. I think you'll agree, Inspector, that business is about being the right person in the right situation at the right time. What it does, it, it helps them to detach themselves, become somebody new, pretend, you know, you know, that kind of thing. It's surprising what a little bit of cross-dressing could do for you, Inspector. You should try it. Mm, not at this stage. <laughs> What do you know about your father's money-stealing stunt? Oh, <laughs> well, yes, that was something that Dad decided to do uh, as part of the shock aspect of the course. But he went too far, you believe? <laughs> he usually does. And do you think it did have anything to do with Liam's death? No, 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 no. Liam wasn't like that at all. I mean, that was just a simple, unfortunate coincidence. I mean, Liam had his own problems, but he didn't have any problems with the money shock stunt. No. So tell me more about this doll burning. It's a symbolic ceremony we perform every few weeks on the court. What's it about? It's about burning your old personality and finding a new one, a better one. So the dolls are... You. They represent you from the past. Each doll has a picture of the student as a child or a teenager. Uh, and they burn the doll and symbolically destroy their old personality. It's quite simple but effective, I find. And why did that girl shout? Because it's an emotional thing. She, she quite clearly become very attached to her doll. They do spend the first month with them. We tell them to take the doll everywhere with them before they actually go through the doll burning. And you believe that's a good thing? Destroying your past? Of course it's a good thing, Inspector. We're all shackled to our past, particularly you by the sound of it, perhaps. Perhaps we should make a doll of you, Inspector, and burn that. What do you think? No, thank you. You're probably right. I'm not sure it would do any good anyway. I didn't realise you were a musician. Oh, well, I'm not really a musician. I mean, I, I, I dabble a little bit. To be quite honest with you, I'm far more interested in collecting guitars. You're not in a band. Uh, well, I, I did audition. I did audition a few years ago. Well, I say a few years ago, of course, I mean about 20 years ago. <laughs> Doesn't time fly? <laughs> what band was that? Oh, I can't remember. Something Stone. Aren't they all called Something Stone? Hammerstone. That's it. And you still collect? Um, I haven't bought a guitar for over a year. I feel I've moved on. What do you know about Emma Bowman criticising Liam before his suicide? I was there. I witnessed it. Uh, well, I, I know Emma blamed herself for his death. Did she? Well, she was upset and all of that, but... Um, <laughs> I wouldn't blame her, Inspector. I, I really don't think she had anything to do with it at all. You don't think? <sighs> Liam was a very confident person, very outgoing, very strong individual, or so it seemed. I mean, people are free to do what they like. Even something as irreversible as bumping themselves off. 
that. Oh, sad though that is, of course. Do you know what uh, these are? Oh yes, that's my old car. Uh, it was vandalised. Um, I took those for the insurance company. Where did you find those? At the pub. Uh, you know who did this? <laughs> yes. A girl called Lisa Blint. She was on the course. Very strange girl. And why did she write the words devil worshippers all over your car? Well, she was a very strange girl. She had a lot of psychological problems. Uh, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, Inspector. I, I mean, she, she took a dislike to the cause for some particular reason. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And um, she asked for a refund. I declined. And she decided to spray her disapproval all over my car. Odd thing to spray, isn't it, though? Devil worshippers? Well, she was a very odd girl, Inspector. Uh, maybe she thought it was a way of getting back at us. I have no idea. Did Rebecca know about it? Well, yes, she did, but I, was, I wasn't about to unleash Rebecca on her. She can be quite fierce sometimes, you know. And I mean, the girl wasn't vindictive. She had psychological problems. She lives in the village, actually. Uh, the run-down house at the end of the lane. Can't miss it. Really? Right. Thank you. Can you tell me about auto-hypnosis? No. What would you like to know? Do you use it on the course? We dip into it occasionally, but uh, it's not a major feature of the course. I would say that, well, a minority of the students know how to use it, but the majority wouldn't know and have a clue. It's not a requirement of the course. No, not at all. We don't, we don't ask people to do things that they're not comfortable with. There's no bribery, no coercion. Uh, we're thinking about phasing auto-hypnosis out, actually. What's the reason for that? Uh, well, to be perfectly honest with you, Inspector, it doesn't actually work very well. Uh, that's all for the moment. Thank you. Could that be where Lisa lives? Run-down house at the end of the lane. That's what Ryan said, wasn't it? Is it Lisa? Yes. Uh, Inspector Jenks, I'm investigating an incident in the village. I wonder if I could ask you a few questions. What sort of incident? I'd rather come in and discuss it if that's all right with you. I promise I won't take long. Thank you. I'll just go in here, yes? I have to go out in a minute. Oh, oh look, I, I can come back later. I might not be here. What did you want to ask? I just wanted to ask you, did you know Kate Vine? No. Right. Well, I heard that you're familiar with Atlas, the uh, life skills training company. What do you want to know about Atlas? Well, I heard you reacted badly to it. Of course I reacted badly. So would anyone. Now, why do you say that? Because they're devil worshippers. Devil worshippers? They're making demons appear. They're tricking everybody. They're getting people to join up. Then they're putting demons inside them. You can see them. See who? Demons. Where could you see them? In the mirrors. At Atlas. Any mirror. You can't get rid of them. They stay inside you. So... 
how did you get rid of them? I didn't. You still see them. I just don't look. I put all the lights on. I make sure it's all bright. I put them on when I need to look in the mirror. If I make sure everything is bright, I just see myself without seeing the other person. Who is the other person? She's like me, but older. It's like her eyes sink in. She's all wrinkled, with a wrinkled mouth, like she's dying. And then I realize I'm her. I'm not me anymore. I'm her. I'm sorry, I, I have to go now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. more questions, if that's okay. Has devil worship ever been part of the course, Ryan? <laughs> Am I correct in assuming that you have spoken to Lisa Blint? You would be. She's been telling me all about the Atlas obsession with Satanism, Ryan. Then if you've met Lisa Blint, then you will have worked out for yourself that she has a very vivid imagination. She also has Psychological problems. Diagnosed psychological problems, as a matter of fact. So where did she get the idea that you lot were, um, devil worshippers? I really have no idea. The girl is insane. She's frightened of her own shadow, bless her. She actually thinks that demons are possessing her even now. You really can't trust a word she says. So, you are saying there has never been any devil worship at Atlas? I don't even know what devil worship is, Inspector. It's not something I particularly know anything about. I certainly don't recall anyone ever having worshipped the devil at Atlas. We even tried to help the poor girl by paying for some treatment, but she didn't want it. Really? It's not easy to offer someone help when they think that you're the problem. So, you used to read a lot about voodoo and satanic rituals, but you don't know anything about devil worship? Well, obviously, I just meant we don't worship the devil. We're not devil worshippers here at Atlas, Inspector. Ridiculous. But the point is, Ryan, that you claim not to know anything about it, but admitted you were obsessed with it when you were younger. Are you sure none of that made its way onto the Atlas course? And that Lisa isn't basing her beliefs on anything within that course? Lisa isn't basing her beliefs on anything other than her own imagination, Inspector. Look, we do use some techniques that some students find difficult, disturbing. We encourage them to see things differently, that's all. And some people simply aren't up to that. Some people, like Lisa, uh, that's why we introduced the aptitude test. What's the aptitude test? This.
We ask students to fill in an aptitude test, uh, medical history, psychological issues, that kind of thing, any medication that they have used in the past, any medication that they currently are using. Here, take a look. Basically, it's just to try and make sure that we don't get another Lisa. Has it worked? Well, touch wood so far, yes. Can I keep a copy of this? Hmm. Huh. I wonder how much importance they actually give to this test. And what are they doing that's so disturbing anyway? Be back later on, if that's okay. Questions, please. Thank you. Can you tell me a bit about this, please? Uh, it's the Atlas Aptitude Test. What do you want to know? What does it test exactly? It's a test uh, we introduced to make sure that any students didn't have any major personality problems, skeletons in the cupboard, so to speak. We introduced it because we had a little bit of a problem with one of the students. Hmm. Lisa. You are well informed. And what do you think it was that disturbed her? I believe that the course proved to be too demanding for her. Uh, we discovered that she had one or two psychological problems and she couldn't handle it. And did you change anything else on the course apart from introducing the uh, test? Uh, we increased the entrance age to 21. Well, it wasn't much, but it's about the only thing we could do. We didn't want another Lisa. We didn't want students turning around and suing us, did we? Do you know anything about devil worship, Paul? I beg your pardon? Devil worship? Uh, Satanism? Am I missing something here? I heard Atlas had elements of Satanism on the course. You were misinformed. We're a training company, we're not devil worshippers. What kind of a question is that? So you've no interest in the occult? No, Inspector, I have no interest in the occult any more than I have interest in pool vaulting, cheese making, or snake charming. Anything else you want to know that I'm not interested in? That's fine, thanks. Can you tell me more about the auto-hypnosis techniques used on the course? We don't use hypnosis on the course. Not at all? Not anymore. So, how was it used? Hypnosis is probably the wrong word, Inspector. It's nothing to do with the trances or things like that. It was... It was meant to force... <coughs> to help students. Did you force them? You can't force anybody into being hypnotised. You have to want to be hypnotised. It's not something out of your control. You can't be hurt or damaged in any way by hypnosis. So you've never put pressure on students to enter into hypnosis? It would be impossible to do so. Do you know what these are? Yes, that's Ryan's car. Another toy he managed to ruin. It was vandalised sometime last year. Do you know who did it? I don't believe anybody was ever prosecuted for it. Do you think Emma's criticism of Liam on that last night led to his suicide? I doubt it helped. Did you encourage Emma to criticise him? I didn't encourage Emma to do anything. I merely told her what we tell every student to do to express themselves as they want to. It would be out of order to criticise them after that, wouldn't it? However, I didn't expect her 
to criticise his birthmark, if that's what it was. That's a decision she took herself. So you didn't know her well? No, not at all. Does um, Ryan play the guitar? Ryan? Ryan couldn't get a tune out of a radio. He's tone deaf. Okay, so he's never tried to go professional. If he did try, it was never going to happen. What can you tell me about doll burning at Atlas? Not very much. It's one of Ryan's ideas. My son is under the illusion that he's a genius. You say you didn't know Emma, uh, yet you bought her a freedom necklace. I don't remember saying anything about buying Emma a necklace. So you didn't buy her one? So you did buy her one. So that means you must have known her, and quite well too. Stop making such a big thing about this, Inspector. Look, I've been around a few years. The clock is ticking, and I admit I have a an embarrassing weakness for attractive women. It was a stupid mistake, but that's all it was. So you're saying you tried it on with her? No, I didn't try it on. I bought her a necklace. I'm not aware that there's a law against buying presents unless, of course, the Third Reich has been elected while I was at a bridge party. Emma was old enough to make decisions for herself. And as a matter of fact, she decided that she didn't want to be bothered with an old fool like me. So nothing happened, no mistakes, nobody got hurt. All right. Like father, like son. No surprises there. I wonder how many students Paul has tried it on with. Aha. So nobody has ever been affected by auto-hypnosis, except Lisa. Hypnosis wasn't the problem, Inspector. Lisa was the problem with Lisa. That's why we introduced the test. But the hypnosis was the trigger, wasn't it? Lisa arrived on the course believing we were all devil worshippers. She was nuts to start with. We didn't make her like that. Well, as far as I can tell, Paul, you've had one student accuse you of devil worship and two others commit suicide. Some of your students aren't having a very good time on this course, are they? Nonsense. Kate was enjoying every minute of it. She couldn't get enough of it. Really? She was full of the joys of life. Bubbly, confident, flirty. With whom? You mean with whom? With whom? Pretty much everybody. 
including me, as I remember. Really? And uh, did you respond? I don't get into relationships with students, Inspector. Company policy. It's not professional. Interesting admission that Kate flirted with him. There's no way Paul would have turned down an opportunity like that. Aha! So you avoid relationships with students, except for Emma, who you tried to date. Oh come on, Inspector! That was a long time ago. And what about Kate Vine? Did you try to date her or not? Oh, don't be so ridiculous, Inspector. Kate was an exceptionally clever girl. She knew exactly what she wanted, and she knew how to get it. You mean that Kate approached you? It wouldn't surprise me if she was playing everyone in the group. Kate had more enemies than you'd think. She was a very, very manipulative young woman. It's getting late. I'm going to have to pick up the pace if I'm going to solve this by midnight. Interesting. Ask you a couple more things, please. The cupboard downstairs. There's a lot of unopened stuff in it. Is there? Prescriptions, made out to you. Oh. They're just spare painkillers. The chemist always gives us too many. He's a friend of the family. Do you know anything about this? It's the aptitude test, isn't it, for Atlas? What do you want to know? Do you know why it was introduced? I think they had some trouble with some unsuitable students. I suppose you have to be careful who you work with. Have you ever come across anyone interested in or involved with the occult? As in black magic? No, why? Atlas don't use occult techniques or anything like that? Atlas? Not unless Ryan's got a secret he's not telling me about. Why, who's been talking? Just a line of inquiry. Okay, thanks. Do you know anything about hypnosis used on the Atlas course? Are you sure you mean hypnosis or the power of persuasion? What's the difference? Not a lot. But if you want someone to do something, it's usually easier to ask nicely. Atlas used persuasion techniques. Well, don't all businesses use it, Inspector? Ever heard of advertising? Have you ever seen these? Mm, it's Ryan's car. It got vandalised last year. His camera had been stolen, so I took pictures. Ugh, whoever did it made a mess, didn't they? But nobody was prosecuted for it. Not that I remember. The insurance paid out, though. Does Ryan play the guitar? <laughs> He tries. He does keep wasting money on them, though. I think he believes if he buys the right one, he'll suddenly turn into Jimi Hendrix. Sad, really. I just let him play in his room. As long as he plays in there, I don't mind. What do you know about doll burning at Atlas? Only that it's part of the course. I 
not entirely sure what they're for, but I made dozens for him. You made them? Oh, Ryan can't make anything. He's practically dyspraxic. Did you know about Paul's money stealing at Atlas? Are you talking about a particular incident or just in general? It's something he did on the course. Stunt. And what did he do exactly? Oh, well, he pretended to steal from the students. That doesn't ring a bell. Paul's stunts usually involve throwing fancy dress parties with scantily clad girls or women dressed as nurses. That's his usual fetish. When was the last party he threw? Um, sometime in the summer. I didn't stay long. Have you seen this before, anywhere? Well, I know the shop. A costume shop just outside the village. Ever used it? Not personally, but I think Ryan might have. Have you seen this before? Don't take any notice of that. Why? James Wilson is a fantasist. He spends his time pretending to cast spells in the woods. He's not exactly a stable person. And, um, I heard that he was involved with growing cannabis. Really? Well, don't quote me on that. So you don't think there's any truth at all to this? None at all. What do you know about Liam? You mean Liam who took his life? He used to play in a band, Black Rock or something? No, Black Stone. Um, very gothic. I used to let them play in here sometimes at the weekends. They were quite good. Did you know there was anything wrong? I mean, why he might have... No, I, I didn't know him very well. So, you don't take any medicines except for prescription painkillers? Well, they're not actually for me, they're Ryan's. Um, for some reason, the chemist always makes them out to my name. He's a an old gentleman. Does Ryan need prescription painkillers? Yes, he's got arthritis. Really? He's young to suffer from that, isn't he? He doesn't have it badly, but he does need medication from time to time. What medicine is it? I can tell you, to be honest. Ryan will know. So Ryan's the one using the prescriptions. I think I might have a word with him, work out exactly what this medicine is. OK, that's it for now. Thank you. Simon? Probably nothing important, but at this stage, I need all the clues I can get. Just a few more questions, if you don't mind. Is this yours? Yeah. That's from my keys. Where did you find that? Just outside. Right. Oh, it must have come off when uh, Nathan dropped my keys off. Uh, he was borrowing my car. That's very trusting. Yeah, I suppose it is. I, I am a bit too trusting, really. It's a new car as well. 
I uh, think you dropped this outside. Someone you know. Oh, this is just this is just from some IT guy in there. Uh, I don't need it. Enough. I uh, noticed some numbers on the back. Do you need these? I don't know. But what is it? Uh, one nine zero five. Oh yeah, yeah. That's just that's just a, a pen or something. It's okay. I can remember it. So not an offshore savings account or anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's uh, it, it's not important. Did you know about Ryan's arthritis? Ryan? He's got arthritis? Apparently. No, I didn't know. I hadn't noticed he had any problems. Did you do a test before you started at Atlas? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it was all just questions about uh, if I had any illnesses or mental health problems or stuff like that, you know. But they didn't actually ask for any proof, so I could have lied through your teeth on that one. I don't think they actually checked. Interesting. What do you know about devil worship? Devil worship? W where? At Atlas. <laughs> devil worship at Atlas? No, there's none of that. So the bike's the only way you can get to work, yes? Yeah. What's wrong with the car? No, I can't drive the car yet, can I? I don't have my license. Right. I got a windfall from an insurance payout. Uh, just figured I'd buy something sensible with it straight away instead of wasting the money. What was the insurance payout? Uh, it was for a laptop. It got stolen down at Atlas. An Atlas? Well, they didn't break in. They, I think they just walked in and took it. The laptop was in a storeroom, but I think the lock was broken, to be honest. Doesn't sound like they're taking their security very seriously. Uh, actually, it got a lot better after that. I think I'll check it anyway. Must have been a very nice laptop to be able to buy a car with the insurance. Or a very cheap car. Might have to have a talk with Ryan about his security measures. Ask about a few more things, please. Were you at Atlas when Simon's laptop was stolen? Oh, I believe I was, yes. It was taken from the storeroom in the hallway. Was it ever recovered? No, we didn't catch anyone. We're quite exposed out here. Uh, somebody could just have wandered along the lane, seen into the storeroom. It's not particularly secure. They could have been in and out within minutes. Uh, that's why we advise people to keep their valuables with them. You can't be too careful these days, Inspector. Have you seen this before? No, sorry. Know anything about this? Uh, no, I don't, I'm sorry. We, we have our own IT chap. Lovely chap, in fact. Uh, fat and sweaty, though. It's, it's like a double act, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Tell me about your arthritis. Oh, you found out about that. <laughs> well, yes, I'm old before my time. <laughs> That's very unlucky to have it so young. Well, I take a lot from life, Inspector, and sometimes life likes to give you a little bit back. I mean, it's not too bad, it's not too debilitating. It's mainly uh, some in my right hand, some in my left hand. It's not particularly a problem. Uh, makes it difficult to hold small things, though. What do you take for it? I uh, get a prescription painkiller. How often do you need that? Not often, as and when, as and when. I keep some here, I keep some at home. 
Stop it, Robin. Do you know what the medicine in the cupboard at the pub is for? You'd better ask Rebecca about that. I'm not exactly sure what's in there. She tends to keep her wares under lock and key. Do you know, our wedding night was quite a surprise. <laughs> Aha. So, you don't keep any medicines on site at Atlas? No. Except your prescription painkillers? Well, these are not available to the students. But they are kept on site? Yes, but they're locked away. They're kept in storeroom. Nobody would have access. You're sure about that? Absolutely sure. And what are the painkillers, Ryan? <laughs> Painkillers. Uh, just painkillers. Normal painkillers. Paracetamol. Codeine. Morphine. Well, all right. They're morphine tablets, yes. Oh, really? Oh, come on, Inspector. I know what you're thinking, but there's no way Kate could have had access to them. Because they're in the storeroom. Well, not just that. She wouldn't have even known about them or where they were. Sure about that? Yes. So it is morphine Ryan's taking. The pieces are starting to come together. Now I just have to work out how Kate got hold of it. If it was Ryan's morphine she got hold of, of course. Aha! So the storeroom isn't particularly secure, yet you keep your morphine tablets in there. I thought you said no one could get access to the morphine, but they could quite easily, couldn't they, Ryan? I didn't mean that storeroom. I meant a different storeroom. I keep them in there. OK. So where was it locked up? It's upstairs. It's got a combination lock on it. Nobody could have access to it except me and Dad. Nobody. I might have a look at that if you don't mind. Don't mind at all. Combination locked room, I see. Well, I might have a look around for that. See how secure and combination locked it really is. Thank you. Probably be back later. Welcome to the Mirror Room. This exercise is all about identifying the difference between the image one presents to the world and one's real self, which lies deep in our unconscious. As you move through the network of mirrors, practice seeing yourself as a stranger. The more you separate from your persona, the more aware you will become of your true desires and ambitions. Chant with us. I am free from my image. I am free from my past. I am free from myself. I am free from my image. 
I am free from my past. I am free from myself. I am free from my image. I am free from my past. I am free from myself. This exercise involves the use of liberation masks. You have now completed module one. Module two covers boundary testing, threshold testing, and extreme testing. Please read the notes carefully before attempting the module. Couple more questions, if that's okay. Do you know about the mirror room at Atlas? Yeah. What's it used for? Well, it's mainly for the auto hypnosis module. Uh, you go in and you stare into the mirror and you go into a trance. Then, when you're ready, you come back out. So you just go in whenever you want to. Oh no!、Um, there's certain times when you're allowed in. And、uh, only they know the combinations, anyway. So you can't really get in. But you don't know the combination. No. Aha. So you didn't know the combination to the locked mirror room? No.、Nope. Except you'd written it down, hadn't you? This is the combination to the mirror room, Simon, that you wrote. It isn't a pin. It's a combination. Yeah. You see, this sort of thing makes me suspicious, Simon. What were you doing in there that you didn't want anyone, including me? Find out. It's just part of the course, isn't it? I just, I just wanted to go in there when I was ready. On your own? You didn't give a number to anyone else. No. Simon, there was morphine kept in that room that might have played a part in Kate Vine's death. Did Kate have the number? Yes. Okay.、Uh, we both went in together. We were trying to outdo each other. We we both tried to morph it. What do you mean trying to outdo each other? It's part of the course to see how far you can push yourself, to see if you could do something you wouldn't normally do. When was this? A few months ago. How often did you try it? Only that once. I'd never do it again. How about Kate? I don't know. Sorry. Got the morphine, but what exactly does this testing involve? Could this have been what killed Kate? Eleven o'clock, just an hour left to solve this thing. Push it all the way in, Tom, if you want to. <coughs> Excellent, Tom. Excuse me. Would someone care to tell me exactly what's going on here? Don't come any closer. That man needs a doctor. No, he doesn't. I don't need a doctor. I'm fine. Go away. What is this? A test of what? What does it look like? It's a threshold test, a pain threshold test. I thought、uh, you were supposed to be good at working things out. 
Inspector Jenks. And so this would be for Atlas, would it? Kyle. You disappear now. It's not a good idea to talk to a police inspector like that. Do you want me to make you? It's okay, Tom. Mr. Jenks won't be bothering us anymore. Don't make any rash commitments. Well, well. You really should take more care of your things, Ryan. Is your keys, Kyle? No. So that's threshold testing, is it? Sticking a skewer through your hand? I could just ask Ryan or Paul directly about this, but I think I'll bide my time. See what I can do with this key fob first. Bingo. Well, Ryan, what have you been up to? Be very interesting to see how he explains this one. So James is interested in poppy pods, is he? I think he's got some explaining to do. Questions, please. Odd question, but have you ever seen anyone handling dried poppy pods? Poppy pods? As in, for opium? No. Though, James did have opium tea once, I think. Where did he get it from? I don't know. I didn't ask. James does his own thing. What does opium tea taste like? I don't know. I didn't try it. Really? I didn't want to risk it, did I? But I went to hospital once. Uh, I, I had codeine and I went into anaphylactic shock. The doctor said it was um, an opium derivative, apparently, so.
Aha. You and Kate took morphine in the mirror room. That's what you said, isn't it? Yeah. But you're allergic to opiates, Simon. Opium. You didn't take the morphine at all, did you? Well, no. No, I didn't. Kate did, though. I thought you were trying to outdo each other. That was the point, wasn't it? We weren't trying to outdo each other as such. Go on. <sighs> Ryan wanted me to test Kate. To see how far she would go to be prime candidate. What candidate? Prime candidate. It, it means the best person in the group, basically. What do you mean, test her? But you do it in pairs. One person's the tester, it's me. And the other person's the... Victim? Well, it's not like that. It's completely consensual. It's just boundary testing. Ryan wanted me to test Kate. Because they thought she was the best student. Well, maybe. I... I don't know. I just did what I was told, okay? Except you decided to give her morphine. To break the law. Well, I can't change that now, can I? She didn't die of a morphine overdose, did she? She died because she drowned. But she drowned for reasons that aren't clear. Atlas seemed to have this all neatly worked out. If Simon's telling the truth, Atlas are lighting the fuse and then retiring to a safe distance, letting students test themselves and push themselves to their limits while avoiding all comeback. Is this what happened to Kate? Thank you. Probably be back later. Ask you a couple more things, please. Now, tell me what a prime candidate is. You're learning a lot, aren't you, Inspector? <laughs> prime candidates are simply the best students, the ones with the most potential. And what benefits do they get from that? Well, they get the top job. Which is? Well, we have a deal with various multinationals. We train students to be exceptional, truly exceptional. And they get a wonderful top job. It seems a very simple deal. And how do you decide who the prime candidate is? Do you test students? No. Did you ever, say, ask Simon to test Kate, for instance? Oh, you've actually been speaking to Simon, haven't you? I really wouldn't trust anything that Simon Thompson says. You know, he spent the best part of two months trying to undermine Kate. No, 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 no. Now, Simon Thompson, it really isn't my place to speculate, but uh, if you're looking for motives, Inspector, uh, he certainly had a few motives. I, uh, more than I. A motive to kill her, do you mean? Now, that's very interesting, Inspector. Well, that's up to you to decide her. Know anything about poppy pods? Come across anyone selling them or anything? Poppy pods. <laughs> well, don't tell anyone, Inspector, but I hear that you can make opium out of those. Why do you ask? Doesn't matter. Would you like to explain what this is, please, Ryan? Five hundred pounds intended for Kate. It fell out of your car. At least I assume that's your car on the driveway at Brandon House. I suppose so. So why were you going to give Kate five hundred pounds, Ryan? It was just a little incentive, that's all. Just a little incentive. Not very little, Ryan. Five hundred pounds. She was a, a very good student. We, we heard that she was leaving. We wanted to give her something. But you didn't. Well, obviously not. Are you sure there wasn't any other reason you might want to give her this? Personal reason? No! Well, I'd like to keep hold of this for a little while, if you don't mind. Well, don't consider it a bribe, will you, Inspector? Can you tell me what you know about the mirror room upstairs? Oh, you found that then. Hmm. 
Well, it's very similar to the costumes, Inspector. It's designed to help the students look at themselves differently. And what do you do with the mirrors? You look at yourself, Inspector. You look at yourself until you start seeing yourself as, as others do. And you don't see yourself as, as you do anymore. It, it really, the idea is that you can see yourself eventually any way you wish. So why in a locked room? To make sure you're not distracted, that's all. How often is it used? Not often, a few times a month. Some students find it useful, some don't. Aha. So, students aren't coerced or bribed in any way, except Kate. I'm not sure what you mean. You said you were going to give Kate the £500 as an incentive. That's coercion, isn't it? I really don't think you could call it coercion, Inspector. It was an incentive. That's all, a little encouragement. So, how often do you use incentives? Okay, incentive is probably the wrong word. The money was just to see how Kate would respond. It was part of her assessment. Assessment? We have to assess students as they progress. We, d we don't use conventional methods like sitting an exam or anything like that. Uh, people pay for this course per session. We have to know if they're committed or not. So you're assessing their progress and testing their commitment? Yes, we are. We have to. This is a business, not a charity. So Ryan's claiming the money was part of Kate's assessment. And did this assessment also involve threshold testing, I wonder? Or was the money for something else? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, which one is it, Ryan? Do you test students or not? Well, some of them, yes. Including Kate? Yes. Why was she being tested? She was being tested because... Because we wanted to see if she was good enough to become prime candidate, okay? So Kate was in the running to be prime candidate? Yes! And did you ask Simon to test her? Yes, I did. But I didn't ask him to do anything stupid. He knew it was against course rules. How far did you ask him to push her? I didn't ask him to push her. I asked him to test her. There's a huge difference! If Simon decided to give her too much caffeine or morphine or whatever, that's his responsibility. So if he did anything wrong, it was his own responsibility. He did it with his own mind and his own hand. We have nothing to do with it. Midnight, and still no suspect. Unless you count everyone I've interviewed. It's no surprise that Ryan wants to avoid any suggestion of being responsible for Kate's death. But I wonder if the man protests just a little too much. Was Kate a prime candidate? Well... As Ryan has probably already told you, yes, she was. Did you ask Simon to test her? Yes, it's company policy. Leaders don't get involved. Mm, and it covers your back, of course. Well, nobody knows the students better than they do, Inspector. It's much better to let them just work it out among themselves. It isn't very professional to force students to test each other to the point where one of them gets killed, Paul. We don't force students to do anything that they don't want to do, Inspector. So you don't force them into being tested? No, we don't encourage anybody to hurt or offend anybody else here. You don't use threshold testing, for instance? No, 
if Simon Thompson went too far with Kate, that's his responsibility, not ours. He's the one you should be speaking to, if truth be told. I don't trust him myself. What are prime candidates? The best of the bunch. The peaches. And so what does it mean to be a prime candidate? Success. We have a special relationship with many major international companies. We provide them with our best students. And they get an instant job. And what do you get out of it? Well, it's a little kickback. Just business, Inspector. What do you know about poppy pods? Poppy pod? Ever come across anyone selling them, using them? No. Now, why do you think Ryan might want to give Kate a cheque for £500? I really no idea. Where did you find it? Just outside. You better ask him. You think Ryan was interested romantically in Kate? I know he has a weakness for blondes, but I didn't think it had gone so far as his offering them cash. Can you tell me about the room with the mirrors at Atlas? The one with the combination lock? How did you get in there? I was given the code for the combination. By Ryan? Well, nobody else is uh, allowed to know the code, are they? I'm not in theory. So how is the room used on the course, then? It's a meditation room where the students can reflect on themselves, literally. And what about the CD? Well, that helps, too. It's part of the programme. So you send the students into the room, they put the CD on, they stare into the mirrors. And how long does this last for? Until the CD finishes or they fall asleep. What else would you like to know? And what do you know about Simon's laptop being stolen from Atlas? Uh, no, I wasn't happy about it. What did you do about it? Ryan paid a con man to install a complicated CCTV system at twice the price that it would probably have cost. Seemed to do the trick, though. We haven't had a theft since. When did Ryan begin to suffer from arthritis? Ryan doesn't suffer from arthritis. Really? The only thing that Ryan suffers from is a pathetic inability to deal with any kind of discomfort. He pulled his back sometime last year. Since then, he's going around telling everybody he suffers from arthritis. I thought he had medication for it. Oh, he only has medication because his GP, who is almost as dysfunctional as he is, keeps prescribing it for him. So you don't believe he really has arthritis? Not at all. Do you know who this is, uh, Dean Hayfield, Aztec? Sorry, never heard of him. We have uh, some prisoner of the sort who does our IT. Large guy, no manners. Seen this before anywhere? No. Aha. You say you don't endorse threshold testing, that's the phrase, isn't it? Yes. Except you do, Paul, because you told me that the students use that CD in the mirror room. I've listened to that CD, and it very clearly mentions threshold testing. You keep batting this away, Paul. We don't really use hypnosis. The students aren't really tested. But I am this close to launching a full-scale investigation. Look, we get a kickback from these students, and they have to be exceptional. Of course we have to test them. That doesn't mean we do anything illegal. What do you think we do? Bump off the ones we don't like? Well, that depends on how far you push them, doesn't it? Well, we certainly don't kill them. Nobody here wanted Kate dead. 
I'm sure they didn't. But what do you expect, Paul, when you put students under that much pressure? She was a very, very valuable student. She was worth a lot to the business. Really? And how much would that be? But if you really want to know, 50 grand. She was worth 50 grand? Yes. What, you were selling her? Of course we were selling her. You don't get this, do you? We make perfect employees. Month after month. That's all we do. What do you mean, perfect employees? What big business needs, Inspector, more than anything else, is none of this altruistic, goody-goody crap. What we look for is people with ambition. No ethics. Push. Greed is good. All right? We don't deal with all this comfort stuff. The survival of the fittest. That's all there is. There's no higher purpose, no big plan. There's nothing at the end of the rainbow. Except what you have and you can enjoy in the here and now. And what do you enjoy now, Paul? Are you going to have to excuse me, Inspector? I'm a very busy man. I've got work to do. I'll see myself out. Lovely man, your father. Shut the gate on your way out. Just... You saw this, right? You man up and you sought it tonight. Kyle. doesn't sound good. Two totally morally bankrupt men are plotting to get rid of me. It's midnight. I don't have any backup and I don't even have a mobile phone. This is potentially quite bad. And what's Kyle got to do with it? I think I might make my way over to Atlas while Ryan isn't there. Maybe lock myself in. Prove to me that you're man enough to do this, Kyle. And then you can deal with that ridiculous police inspector. What is this? What the hell? Scotland Yard. Not hell. Hello, Ryan. Hello, Inspector. What are you doing here? Inspecting? So, uh, come on. Let's have it. I don't think you'd understand, Inspector. The best thing that you can do is turn around, go away, and leave us to it. Knife. What? That knife gives me a perfect right to stick my nose in, investigate, and interfere. <laughs> this is all part of the Atlas course. It's a physical endurance exercise. Drop the knife. The knife, Kyle! Kyle. Drop it! Not looking 100% brilliant for you, Ryan. Well, please, Inspector, you've poked your nose into Atlas's affairs enough times to know that imaginative flair is part of the course's success. Our lessons are reinforced by a unique emotional experience. Terror? It's an extremely evocative tool. Well, it's a good job you're not in charge of the national curriculum. <laughs> now look, Inspector, I know what you're trying to do. I know what you're thinking. But believe me, Atlas had nothing to do with the deaths of those people. Eyewitness account of a satanic sacrifice in the woods. That's not what we call circumstantial evidence, Ryan. Simon, 
Now, I saw Simon walking home with Kate last Friday after the meeting. Now, Simon had some strange idea that he was in the running to become prime candidate. <laughs> well, a knob of butter has more chance of becoming prime minister. Oh, wait. So are you telling me that... Simon killed her? Well, that seems reasonable. It's likely, isn't it? <laughs> Any more likely than you, Brian. Pig! I know. Police brutality. It's all right. Are you okay? A few more questions, if you don't mind. What would you say if I said it's been suggested that you were seen walking home with Kate after Atlas last Friday? What? By who? The same person who suggested that you wanted Kate out of the picture because you found out she was in the running to be prime candidate. But who said that? Just a question. I didn't think I was in the running. It was Ryan, wasn't it? I am in no position to say. It was Ryan! Simon, calm down. No, I can prove it. Kate's driving licence, give it to me. Why? Kate's driving licence, please. <laughs> See that pattern on the tape there? Let me show you something. See this pattern? I like that. It's the same pattern. This has come from the same roll of tape as this. So? So there's only one person has taped like that. Ryan. He gave me this piece of tape when I was in his office once. Why has Kate's driving license got a piece of Ryan's tape on it? I have no idea, Simon. Where did you find it? Oh, by the lake. It's obvious, isn't it? Ryan was testing her. He was doing a boundary test to see how much she would do, how far she would go to be a prime candidate. But it all went wrong. <laughs> okay. It's one of the things we do at the course, right? You give something that's important to you to someone else. Then they go and hide it somewhere. It's to teach you to not be bothered when you lose something that's important to you, all right? Kate gives her driving license to Ryan. Ryan goes and hides it somewhere down the lake. Kate finds out, she goes down looking for it, probably drunk, and she falls in. I'm afraid I find that a bit far-fetched, Simon. <laughs> it makes perfect sense if you know anything at all about how Atlas works. But Simon, if you got the tape from Ryan, Kate could have got it from him. He told me he doesn't lend it out. He lent it to you. But I didn't kill her! Do a lab test on the card! His DNA will be all over it. And what if yours is all over it? <laughs> it won't be! I didn't kill her! I'm sorry, just 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 give me a minute. I need I need some painkillers. Where did he go in such a hurry? Is he trying to act as suspiciously as possible?
A uh, few more questions, if you don't mind. Have you seen patterned tape like this anywhere before? Oh, Ryan's got some. I know, because I borrowed it. When was that? A couple of months ago. Have you still got it? I don't think so. I haven't seen it since then. Did you know Kate Vine was a prime candidate? No. Do you know what a prime candidate is? At Atlas. Um, it's the best student. And what does that mean? It means they get a guaranteed job with a very good salary. Well, that's the idea anyway. But? Mostly they aren't up to it. What happens then? They get sacked. What do you know about poppy pods? Go on. Ever come across anyone trying to sell them or anything like that? Maybe even in here? <sighs> Not that I remember. Do you know anything about a locked room at Atlas with mirrors in it? Not off the top of my head, no. I think that's a question for Ryan. Do you know anything about this? No, sorry. Have you seen this before? No. Aha. You last saw that sticky tape two months ago, is that correct? Yes. So how come you used it last week to tape over the broken window outside? That's the same tape. Well, I must have been mistaken. You see, the reason I'm asking is that it's exactly the same tape that was found attached to Kate's driving license, found at the scene. The tape that only Ryan has. Ryan! And, of course, you. So what are you saying? Who's got the tape now? Do you know where it is? No. No, I don't know where it is. Why are you asking me about this tape? You seem nervous, Rebecca. Is there a problem? Well, you're practically accusing me of having something to do with that woman's murder, aren't you? I wasn't accusing you of anything, Rebecca. Unless there's something you'd like to tell me. <laughs> no, I wouldn't like to tell you anything. Okay, well, that's fine. Obviously, uh, we'll be swabbing everyone in the area for DNA, so if anything comes up on Kate's license, DNA traces. What'll come up? Nothing will come up. But I've had enough. I've got to get back. Rebecca! Would you like to explain to me exactly what is going on? Which bit? The fact that some leggy bitch was trying to steal my husband? I think... You had better tell me what you know, Rebecca. Okay. You want to know what I know? Kate Vine seduced my husband and was going to blackmail him. Not only did she sleep with him, that whore did it just for his money. Our money. How did you work that out? I heard her. I knew it was her arguing with Emma Bowman. Emma was trying to talk her out of it. And how did she come to be at the lake? She dropped that driving license thing when 
she came in, she, she was drunk, she dropped her bag, I took it out to the woods and stuck it over the lake. And then I waited for her. When she came out, I, I told her where it was, that someone had just run off into the woods with it. You led her to the lake? She was reaching out over the lake to get it. I didn't do anything, she just fell in. But you let her drown? It was dark, I, I couldn't see anything, I couldn't help her. Really? Did you try, Rebecca? Well, it was too late. She was just flapping about in the water. It was pathetic. She was making these gurgling sounds. And what did you do? I got a big stick. I just pushed her down with it until she stopped. Well, she was dead anyway. What did it matter? You killed her, Rebecca. But she slept with my husband. She didn't, Rebecca. What do you mean? You got the wrong girl. Who? Emma. It was Emma. Rebecca Rand, I am arresting you for the murder of Kate Vine. You do not have to say anything, but anything you do say may be taken down and will be used in evidence against you. Do you understand? Yes. So, it appears that Kate Vine's death was a tragic case of mistaken identity. But there are some loose threads here. What was Ryan doing with Kyle and that girl in the woods? What if I hadn't interrupted? And what really happened to Liam last year? It seems I've only scratched the surface of Atlas and the Rand business empire. Trying to find out about Paul Rand's past is like peering into dense fog. He gives nothing away and covers his tracks with military efficiency. However, what is known is that Paul Rand has a lot of connections in high places. Politicians, celebrities, business leaders. Perhaps James Wilson's ideas weren't too wide of the mark after all. I get the feeling there's still a lot more to learn about the Rand business empire. We're going to have to excuse us. Atlas is closed for the moment, but we'll be open again very soon. Thank you for your interest.